dare to dream with me, ladies and gentlemen. These are sanctuary houses, and we can restore them to their former glory. Well, maybe not their former glory, maybe like a partially exploded, partially irradiated, partially junk-filled glory, but the game gives us the tools, which means we have the power to turn these into houses fit for our settlers and maybe even your fine self. Now it appears to me that um, every single person who makes building videos uh, for Fallout has redone the sanctuary houses and I'm feeling a little bit left out of this, you know, like, you know, sanctuary house party. So, for your viewing pleasure, Addy does a sanctuary house video too. Can we build it? Of course we can. Welcome to Build It, ladies and gentlemen. This, as said in the introduction, is Addy Makes a B Sanctuary House 2, because everyone else has already. A few things I want to say to you before we get started. First of all, if you are playing on PC and you already have lots of mods installed that add junk around the place, uh, especially kind of plants, uh, sorry, no, let me take out the word junk, that adds kind of plants and trees and stuff that might change the uh, the area around uh, sanctuary, you may want to turn those mods off even if just uh, temporarily. Uh, if you've got any of the mods installed that allow you to kind of clear everything and uh, like scrap everything, um, you may also uh, want to turn those off as they can conflict. But I suggest what you probably do first of all is just try and do what we're going to do and then if it doesn't work this may be the cause. Now the other next thing to note is different houses are different difficulties to be blunt. Uh, some of these houses over here are some of the easiest. You can see that they're just basically uh, a square with a with a triangle roof, square with a triangle roof with a garage. Um, and then they get harder if you add on this kind of extra triangle here. If you see the house in front of us here, see it has the kind of a... Yeah, I have a, fl I have a floating light. I know I have a floating light. Uh, we've got a triangle on this side and then a forward-facing triangle on this side. So different roofs are different... Some of the houses are difficult, more difficult than others. And this one, oh, this one, I have had so much problem, so many problems with this one. Uh, it doesn't seem to act like any of the others and it's causing me jip. So I'm gonna go for this one over here, roughly in the middle of the sanctuary, right next to the tree to show you some of the things that I've seen in other videos. I'm sure you've seen in other videos, but put together a kind of a scrappy, junky uh, looking um, house. That is our goal. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to start with the roof, which I've pre-built over here, because I quite like the idea of having... Uh, I've seen var variations on Sanctuary where people kind of build up, and I think that looks really cool, like big kind of shanty towns and people kind of put houses on top of houses, and I think that looks really, really good. Um, but there's lots of videos that do that already. Just Google Sanctuary Houses and you'll find some of them. Um, and I thought I would try something more that more kind of restores the roof. And you can build roofs out of... really nice looking roofs out of the new... Um, Factory stuff, and also out of the barn stuff that's now been out of that, been out for um, a, a few months now. And I've basically rebuilt the shape of that roof um, over here. Now, when you're doing this kind of stuff, you do need to save over and over again because we're, what we're going to do is we're going to use group select to take it all the way over there. Now, if you're not sure how group select works, I've done a very detailed video exactly on on group select and uh, rug glitches and talked about how they work and how they're different. And I'll put the links in the description below. Go and check them out if you want. Um, but basically, once we move this over, we're not really going to be able to move it back. So I would suggest before you move it, you save. Um, and I've already saved at this point here, so I, I know that I'll be able to get back. The other thing that might cause you problems, and uh, I think I just saw someone going in, is followers. Uh, they have a nasty habit of basically certain objects pass through the followers. They may it may not place. Um, so you might want to tell them to all go and wait very, very, very far away, uh, just in case that causes you problems. Thank you, dog meat. Um, so what I've done is I built the I've got these are upper, upper shack floors and then I built the shape of the roof on top of it using the uh, the barn here and then I built the roof on top of that so that was the order I had to do so floors shape roof on top of that was how I put that together and then I put some scaffolding down but I equally could have used the concrete pillar or whatever it was and I raised and I group selected and I raised the whole thing up and then I put another one right here and raised the whole thing up a little bit further so I'm going to hold down there. So I've held down the uh, select button, which for me is E on the PC, um, but um, I believe it's X and, uh, you know, basically your kind of select button. And we're going to come over here 
and we're going to try and find a place where it allows us to put it. And you see there, it, it's going to be fussy, but it's not too fussy. Now, what we need to be able to do is to manipulate where we are so we can see clearly exactly where we're, we're putting this. Um, and uh, so what I've done is I've held down, uh, again, the action key here. And if you use the shoulder buttons on console and if you use the, the mouse on PC, you can actually kind of change the angle that you are, that where the, that this is in relation to you. And what that allows us to do is to look carefully at the side of this roof. Because what we are looking to get here is uh, a good view of exactly where we are placing this roof. Because all, like I said, once it's down, it's pretty much down. Um, and we want to try and line up the triangles, the top of the triangle. So, so you imagine the roof originally has a, a peak like that from the side, this is. So we want to make sure our triangle lines up as much as possible uh, with that triangle. And this will be one of those things where you basically you, you fiddle and you fiddle and you fiddle and fiddle until you are happy. And I'm going to put mine roughly here. Now you can see that uh, the version I've got here, which is, uh, I think it's five along and four across, has a bit of a, a cut out here and the other end looks a bit kind of scrappy as well. One way you can get around that is to make the roof longer. So maybe six, maybe even seven. And then what you do is you kind of come around the edge. And if I go into, let's go into barn and then go into miscellaneous. What you can then do is come around the edge with um, pillars and you can actually kind of make these overhangs become part of the, the design itself. Um, so, so what like I'm doing here, you kind of put the pillars in and then you're just going to put things here underneath and the kind of junk, so um, boxes, crates, um, uh, uh, crafting stations, etc., etc. Putting the uh, when, when they're floating off the ground like these ones are, uh, it can be a bit fussy. They normally do go in. You just have to be kind of looking for exa exactly the right angle, and they will uh, go in. But they are very fussy. But if they if you're finding whatever you do, you can't just get them in. You scrap that post and then go to the shorter posts and then the longer posts you can normally then kind of get them that way to be get them to be touching the floor um, and this as this is kind of a quick guide video i'm not gonna be kind of doing everything fully but you can kind of just you see what i'm doing i'm kind of getting the roof in in a position that i'm pretty much happy with and then um the, the better more accurate you get it the better but then you can kind of patch it up the other end for this particular design i'm going to say it doesn't look great. I've got this kind of like open border thing here, um, but we can we can build over it, we can build around it, and I could extend it out. But to be to be blunt, I'm never really going to walk down this end of the sanctuary and look at the house from this angle. So I don't really care. But if you do, extend it out, build down, put some put a staircase that kind of goes up and around it, and then you've got your um, your lovely roof in place. So roof down. Next thing to go in, we're going to be patching up. Uh, some of the walls and there's lots of ways you can do this and I'm sure you may well have seen it on other videos but basically we're going to be using the group select glitch again on either concrete pillars or whatever you want to do um, or any anything like a foundation that kind of goes up or down to kind of place these objects um, at a height um, that we like and we're basically going to go around the house um, placing these um, objects in where we want them um, to cover up bits of the, the house which are either kind of broken or they don't look very good or, or, or whatever. So the first one we'll do will be uh, this one here and I seem to have lost control of it. Let me try that one again. Uh, if you find by the way you lose control of the group selects, oh, and I've said this in my group select video, if you just come back to it, um, you come back to it, you just select the object, select the object, deselect the object and then reselect the object with group select and it should then work fine. The other way you can get better control over these is you can try and pick an object which is going to be roughly the height that you are going to be placing that object. So in this particular case, it's probably going to be better for me to use a slightly taller foundation and try to put that foundation roughly at the height that I'm going to be ending up to be placing it. So if, for example, I know I was going to be placing this into the air, it would be good if I started the foundation way down there. Um, but as I'm actually going to be wanting the, it to be roughly the height it is, then I can just kind of put the foundation um, far higher and again group select it and then we can take it into the house again if you want more tips on group select and rug glitches and all that kind of stuff see the descriptions in the video and then this should nicely fit in here now you want to get you always look when you look doing these kind of things you want to get the balance between having it 
uh, too far outside of the house and too far inside the house. And it depends what kind of effect you want. I don't mind little bits of light coming through. I think it looks quite realistic that you've kind of patched it up. If I go too far that way, then it will be more visible on the other side, on the outside of the house. If I go too far this way, then more of the um, the wood will be visible on this side of the house. None, neither option is wrong. It just depends what you prefer and what you quite like. So I'm going to go for something kind of roughly in the middle where I can see, let's say I can see the the wall. Let's say I want it on the outside. So I'm going to see a little bit of the wall like this. That. Uh, so I can see a little bit of the wall on this side and the frame, and it's like I've patched it up from the outside. But if you go the other way, you know, it's absolutely fine. Um, Let's do some of the door. I'm not going to do all of this because I want this to be a relatively speedy video and I'll have a break where I kind of put more things in place. Uh, doors. If you um, get a door frame, stick it down, put a door into the door frame, select just the, the door frame and scrap it, the door should stay. Then what you can do is grab one of these little bad boys and just bring the door frame down. Um, to a better height because the door will originally be just off the ground you can bring it then down a little bit lower um, so it's almost in line with the floor then what I've done is I've grabbed another object I've just grabbed the ashtray because that and the ashtray is an object that um, whoops the ashtray is an object which um, touches the floor doesn't go through it and it's also quite easy to use and I can use this this object to kind of put doors into the various rooms so I could put one uh, right here to be the front door if I wanted and I can put them in here to be the interior doors and again when I break the video in a minute I'll put loads of these things in and you can kind of see where they're going to go. The same trick can actually be used with um, that, that small brown wall I had a minute ago to try and patch up little areas like this. I wouldn't necessarily use a door there but you but you can see how it goes. Um, another little trick you can do with doors is there's some new doors in the warehouse uh, or factory element. Just shove this here. Unaccurate Addy rins again. Uh, the yes, the um, the new warehouse doors have got glass in them, which makes them quite a handy little tool for patching up small windows. If you get that jolt again, remember you just select the oops, you just select, deselect, select again. You don't get the jolt, and because some of the houses have tiny little windows that are too small for you to put big things in. Uh, but not too small for this. So you just use the foundation there to put it nicely in place. Again, decide how much you want visible on this side or that side. Door handle is going to be sticking through, but it just depends how anal you are. Hopefully that will be fine on the other side. And look, behold, a window! Um, and then you can do the same thing with uh, pieces of glass. Another little nice one you might want to consider doing with... If I scrap this one for a second. If I go to warehouse walls and I grab you know the big bit of glass uh, if you want to make it look really junky you can actually pick up a broken piece of glass but you can grab that one like this grab your scaffolding frame hopefully this will go high enough and you can use this to repair uh, the windows and uh, now the one tricky thing you might have is trying to line up the poles because obviously you've got different kind of window frames there but I think it looks okay, and actually if you go from one side to the other, the walls are actually quite thick, and so it normally gives this kind of idea that you've you've patched up the inside of the window versus the outside of the window. And in fact, I'm just going to, possible, bring it just a little bit closer um, to me so it's not sticking through on the other side. Um, you can only kind of select it again if there's no other objects around very, very close to it. As soon as there are other things nearby, um, the group select obviously doesn't work because then you'll group select loads of things you don't want to. And it's going to be a little bit of a battle to try and get it inside both walls. So I've got one tiny little bit cutting through there, which I may actually just deal with. Because it might actually just be hay decoration. That'll do. There you go. And now I've got glass on my glass. But supposing we don't use glass. <gasps> Crazy talk, I know. Supposing we use a fence. Oh, look at this. Now, if you really want to have a nice junky feel to your house, as if you really have patched this up, let's make the windows patched up instead of actually um, be repaired properly. So to do this, I'm going to use a bit of wire mesh. And it looks like I need to take this slightly higher than this one will allow me to do that. You just place, you grab another one, you do the same thing again, and Codsworth gets in the way because he's a tool. In fact, we could probably just do it with a slightly taller one. Remember, your, remember, place the scaffolding or the concrete pillar at the rough height that you think you're going to 
need it eventually and you can just kind of keep readjusting the height and there we go and with this one it's quite fussy about where it goes and you need to be careful because it will for this particular window it's actually going to overhang slightly off the edge of my of the the window frame um i'm not particularly bothered because i'm not going to stare at it but if every time you walk past that's going to make you cry you may want to just a little bit if you find it sticks through or won't kind of place in certain areas then again you can kind of adjust the angle that you've selected it at um, to try and fix that particular issue and of course if you are on pc i strongly recommend you get a copy of place anywhere because then you can place it anywhere oh i think i want that slightly higher then it looks more like it's kind of covering the whole window a little bit more there we go that's better Ta-da! And then we can get rid of that. And I think that's a really, really nice alternative way of patching up windows, especially once you kind of cover it with other kind of junk and posters and, and all sorts. I think that is really, really cool. Was there anything else we needed to do? So obviously there's other walls I'm going to be patching up. There's other windows I'm going to be putting in. But wait, the floor! Okay, floors are going to be a pain in the ass because the floor pieces that you can make are not exactly the same size as the houses that they... that. Um, and it's important here that we have a little gap to, between our um, selecting object and our floor, which is where the house wall is going to go. And then we're just going to try and slide this into place. If you find this doesn't go, it will probably be because you've put in an object already which is interfering with it. So it's the reason why we're kind of doing this bit of the house before we start to kind of decorate the house is because we don't want the decorations to get in the way of our... Um, structure. Now, so what I'm going to do here is I'm looking, I'm, first of all I'm looking way over the right hand side it's just going to cut through the wall so I just want to make sure that the, the wall is as straight as possible so I can see almost the yellow kind of cutting through in every area or green if you're using that and then I'm going to look to do the same, roughly the same at the front. You're never going to get it exact but then you do want to go in as much as possible because it doesn't fit properly so you do want to go in a decent amount. The next thing you want to do, as, as and when you're lining this up, is I'm now looking into the house. So can you see where the scaffolding is? I go up and you can see there's like a yellow square inside the house. As I take this down, that yellow is going to disappear. And the, well, at the point it disappears is the point it actually then isn't going through the floor anymore. Uh, and obviously this needs to be visible to actually be kind of worthwhile. Um, so I'm just going to adjust this until I can see no yellow on the outside but I can see it on the inside and hopefully we cross our fingers very nicely we should have a passable floor inside again the more the longer you fiddle with this the more you can try and get this absolutely perfect but you almost certainly will have a gap here and you almost certainly will have a gap um, here but the further you kind of slot it in but basically we're going to stick objects over this anyway so it shouldn't be a major diff major issue and here is the finished house um, I finished putting some pillars around the side. I also put some, I uh, group selected some uh, uh, roof, angled roofs into the front to give me a bit of a kind of a walkway up to it. Every little section now either has glass in or some mesh over the front, and I really like that junky feel. Still got a skeleton. I'll need to get a mod to, to deal with that lot. Um, big factory windows over the, over the front here. Um, I've got white doors in every slot here to give some uniformity. We've, used, we've patched up the wall between the bathroom and the other room using this kind of stuff. I, I really like the junky look, so I don't mind this kind of blue and stuff here. But if you prefer something else, by all means use um, uh, kind of more metal walls. Um, that's actually a door, but it fitted the window. Technically, you can open it, so you could say, look, it's my opening window. Or you could just never open it. And, and so on. I put a door here at the end. I thought I might try and use this as a cupboard. Maybe put some shelving in there. We'll see how it goes when we start decorating. But you can really see that the house structure now is a lot closer to um, what it kind of was pre-war while still looking like it's been through hell, um, which I'm really, really pleased with. Um, one other nice little thing that you may have already twigged, if I take you up here... <laughs> Um, if I take you up here, um, because this is a this is a barn roof, but it would also work with a warehouse roof. If you go to the roofs, there's these extra little um, kind of walkways that will will clip to these. 
and depending on how where you've how well you've got your roof on they may clip or they may not so i found that this one it's uh it does clip in most of these locations here but if you wanted a way of building up onto the roofs that wasn't just like building a big kind of bits bit of scaffolding on top or something like that um, and there's nothing wrong with scaffolding on top, but you know, you could turn that into a guardhouse, you could turn that into another room, you could attach it to a staircase going down there, you could put a radio tower on it, um, you could make some really interesting um, structures um, coming off the top here as well. So I do hope that this has given you um, a load of ideas for your um, settlements, and in part two of this video, uh, we will and then properly start looking at decorating the inside and seeing what kind of funsies we can have to complete our house. So there we are, there's our basic structure all ready for decoration, which we'll be doing in um, the next video. If you've liked any of this kind of stuff then uh, that I've video I put on today, then please do hit the uh, the like button. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hopefully check out the decoration video, which will probably be out by now whenever you're watching this. And I've got loads of um, role plays and mod videos and all sorts of other stuff for you guys to um, watch as well. It has been an absolute pleasure having you here. And you know what? It was an absolute pleasure having me here too. Take care. Goodbye.